Uh oh. She gonna do it? I'm controlling this, by the way. Don't you dare just stop me to drop me to credits. I am controlling this, obviously. I can't run. This perspective is pretty awesome. What are those things up there? Oh, it's the fatties eating. You can tell from the disgusting noises. Oh! Looks like the tables have turned. Let me just... Oh, God. No, you know what? I don't want any of that. I'll just eat you spiritually. <laughs> Today, this smurf dines on Gargamel. Oh, I'm not controlling it anymore. I control the c camera, though. Okay, wow, okay. Well, I, I have no idea. I'm just as confused as when I started as to what could possibly any of that have, could have, have meant. Yeah, I, I'm not gonna get the deep meaning of that. I'm gonna have to read somebody else's synopsis, or if you think you know what the hell was going on, definitely let me know in the comments below. But, uh, yeah, no idea. I mean, obviously she kind of became the the force. I don't know if I necessarily even say she was an evil force, per se. But, um, I mean, she did kill one of those little guys who weren't hurting her at all. That was kind of cruel. It's like her hunger... I guess if you look at it through the progression of the game, her hunger did get more... intense, I suppose you could say. Like, she started off with bread, then I think she ate, like, some raw meat. Then she... I think that... then she ate one of the little guys and she ate her so now she's like well now I've really got to go out there in the world and find some new prey perhaps 
Yeah, no idea what, what all of that meant. People who are better at interpreting the meaning of stuff like that, I'm sure can, can figure it out, but, uh... Anyway, typically this is where I give my mini-review of the game, what I think of it, off the cuff, all that. Overall, I liked it. I really liked the atmosphere. The atmosphere, the creepy noises, the way the characters looked and behaved. Like, they like, they just looked weird and creepy. They had, like, no... Especially the, the fat people had no... What were you, like, uh, no shame, no self-control? Well, not self-control, but no, just no shame. They didn't care what they looked like. They're sitting there shoving food in their face, being nasty, going after you, like, tripping over each other, trying to get to you. It's just that really cool, spooky, bizarre atmosphere. Uh, the gameplay, uh, the perspective, the way it looks is cool. But actually playing it caused a lot of issues with that weird spe skewed perspective. Anytime that you had to like run in a specific area, which happened quite a few times, could get very frustrating. Just due to the very bizarre camera angle and trying to run straight was one of the hardest things in the world to run straight. You end up running crooked and all over the place, uh, especially if you're not used to playing games from uh, an analog pad specifically, but just like I said, just trying to run straight sometimes and a certain parts like trying to run through the fat people trying to grab you that was tough because Like I say, it's you're trying you know where you want to run But you don't quite make it like you you your character doesn't go quite the way you intend to and end up getting killed and have to go back the checkpoints they're not the checkpoints weren't terrible but they could have used more. I honestly feel like the checkpoints were done in, in such a way to try to make the game a little bit longer. Because typically the harder parts were near the end of a checkpoint. So that if you, you had to fail and go all the way back and do some of the easier stuff again. Which takes some time. Like for example that one jump that I got stuck on for a while. I could have taken, like it took me at least 10 minutes to get through there. At least half of that was getting back to that point. Getting up to that point was easy once I understood you know, what they wanted you to do. So I didn't end up spending, you know, three minutes just trying to get back to where I was and then die within 10 seconds because I, the, again, because of the skewed perspective, trying to jump onto the thing from where it looked like, oh, I'm gonna land on it. And then you, oh, whoops, you completely missed it. Cause, definitely caused some, uh, some issues. So perspective looked good, Gameplay wise, it definitely caused some issues. I think if you're going to go for a game with this kind of perspective, you need to not do your puzzles in such a way that it's so finicky, so specific, that it's going to punish the players. And if you're going to do that, make your checkpoints more frequent. Again, they weren't terrible, but it was frustrating to have to go through some of the more trivial parts again. Not because you did something wrong necessarily, or you couldn't figure out what you were supposed to do, or you panicked, but because you knew what you were supposed to do, and you, know, you weren't able to control it quite as precisely as you wanted to because of the, the way the controls were. That is very, very frustrating. Uh, if the checkpoints would have been more frequent, that wouldn't have been a big of an issue, but the game would have been even shorter. I would say that game took me about... Uh, maybe four hours? Maybe? Maybe five. Probably not five, though. I think five is pushing it. And I got stuck, I mean, the longest I probably got stuck on a quote-unquote puzzle was ten minutes. And again, that half of that, I feel like, was just running back to try to do the jumping again. And it wasn't really even a puzzle. And that's what, that's why it kind of hard is, is hard to describe this game, because it's not really a puzzle game. There's puzzles in it. But it's kind of like a puzzle platformer. But the platforming doesn't really have anything to do with the puzzle aspect. You either have a platform you have to jump through, or there's a puzzle that you have to solve. I like the aspects where you're trying to quickly navigate while you're under pressure. Something's chasing after you, something's coming through the door, you've got to work quickly. That kind of stuff was cool. I also like the areas where, like, where you're, you're sneaking above the guy with double long arms and you're walking and trying not to knock stuff off to get his attention. That stuff was cool. Like that had a, a good natural tension to it and it felt good. And again, the parts where they're chasing you and you're trying to do stuff or the part where the long arm guy is trying to reach you through the elevator and is crushing the cage and you're trying to dodge the arms and pull. All of that was like really well done. I really liked that. I don't really see that a whole lot, uh, especially since you can't necessarily fight back 
you're trying to figure out what am I supposed to do or I need to try to figure out quickly oh you know what to do like for example when you're running away from the, the fat people or the big boned people when you're trying to run from them and stuff is happening and stuff's flying everywhere and you're like oh I gotta duck under this and jump over that that those parts were awesome those parts were really really cool however I will say the game was really short uh, if you're the type who wants to get like the most out of your money, which I know that sounds kind of weird when I put it that way. Some people don't care. If they if they love the game, they could play a two or three hour game and think it's worth $60 if they just really enjoyed it. Other people, it doesn't matter if you love the game, if it's super short and it's 60 bucks, for example, and this game was not 60 bucks to be clear, but if it was $60, well, I liked it, but it was only three hours long, therefore, I feel like I was cheated. So I do feel like this game is probably a bit short. Uh, there's probably not a ton of replayability. Yes, you could go back and light the candles. You could also go back and break all of those, what I presume to be some kind of a collectible a figurine. I don't know if you get anything extra. Maybe you get some additional story. That would be cool. If a little bit more was explained, telling you what's going on. From doing the collectibles that would be fine but there's not really a ton other than that there's not a replayability there's also not a lot of really exploration that you need to do like there might be one or two side rooms but generally the only thing that you're going to find there is one of the breakables or a candle that you need to light uh, and, and this game was very interesting in the way that there was a ton of red herrings. I don't know if they did that on purpose, but there's a ton of red herrings where it looks like, oh, I can climb this, or oh, I can swing on this. I bet I need to use this to solve the puzzle. And that wasn't the case. And I actually liked that. I liked it because I feel like a lot of games don't do that. If you can interact with something... Oh, hold on. We get some more. Can I control? No. I cannot. Thank you for playing. Oh, well, thank you for the game. Yes, even this... Even this thing is swag. Sorry, the... Net flying around. I'm actually not going to push anything just yet. As I wrap up here on the review part. But yeah, I like that they actually did have a lot of stuff that you can interact with that had nothing to do with, with the puzzle. It made it more realistic. Because, again, a lot of times if you can interact with it, it's, it's there for a reason. That was not the case in this game. And again, I like that because it's more realistic. And in a, in a, in a, I guess I realize we're talking about it realistic in a game that's about a, playing a girl that's three inches tall running from a guy with like 10 foot long arms. But it just makes more sense. It makes the world feel more more there, right? Uh, overall, a score, as far as a score out of 1 to 10, um, like I said, it was a bit overly short. The controls were frustrating, but I absolutely love the atmosphere. The puzzles were fun to do. Um, I would say what I say out of one out of ten, where five is like a mediocre game, it's got equal good parts good, equal part, parts bad. Ten is like an amazing, absolutely phenomenal game. Maybe a six point five to seven, and again, six is not bad on my scale. Six is a good game. Six is a pretty good game. I guess seven would technically technically be good. So between a 6.5 and a 7, again, it's overly short. The controls got frustrating because of the camera angle, and I feel like they did rely too much on puzzles that required more precision, precision jumping, precision controls, in a case where it can be hard to know the orientation where your character is going to go based on where you push the analog stick. So that ended up adding more frustration and more time than I feel like was necessary and I feel like the lack of checkpoints was just to make the game seem a little bit longer because the hard parts you'd have to redo a few times and you'd have to play through a couple minutes of easier gameplay in order to get back so I feel like that brings the game down but yeah 6.5 to 7 I definitely enjoyed it though as far as the price I always suggest the price as well like what I think you should pay for it honestly um <laughs> I don't I think it's twenty dollars base. I think that's too much given how short the game is. I think ten to fifteen sounds a bit more fair. Fifteen sounds more right, which I know it's only a five dollar difference. But twenty, I don't know, just twenty definitely seems too much. And I feel like if you were better better at the puzzles than me, I feel like you actually could do this game in about four realistically, four hours. I think most people could beat this game in about four hours. If you've got, you know, semi decent platforming skills. I'd say four hours is, is what you could beat this game in. 
But, um, yeah, I definitely enjoyed it, though. Definitely check it out. And thank you guys for watching. I do have a game or a link to the game in the Steam or in my, uh, in my description below the video. It is available for PC, Xbox One, and PlayStation 4. So for whatever platform you're on, pretty much, you can uh, play it yourself if you'd like to take, it a, look, take a look. But make, uh, thanks again to you guys for watching. Make sure you leave comments in the comment section below. Like the video if you like. Both things do help me out a whole bunch. Follow me on Twitter as well. And I'll see you in the next Let's Play.